All right, so today we're gonna focus a little bit on lighting. So um, this is lighting for the main inside portion of the bus. So um, we looked around a little bit at lights and then just kind of chose a set of lights based on color temperature and the size and brightness. So the lights we chose are um, these little guys. They're almost three inches. I think they're 2.8 inches and they put out 200 lumens. That's what they're rated for. I don't know what they actually put out. Um, and they consume, they're supposed to consume about 165 milliamp, um, and, oh, and the 12 volt. So the 12 volt, they consume about 165 milliamp, they put out 200 lumens. So um, we're gonna test them today just to kind of see how they work and to put them in our home automation stuff. So we've, um, so we've continued working on that and we've gotten a little further in that. We've programmed one of the chips to um, control a relay board and then hooked it all up with uh, a package called Home Assistant, which is an open source uh, home automation platform. So we're hoping to leverage that stuff to be able to make our wiring and things like that easier. So these are lights we've chosen. So we're gonna, we are hooked up to a PC power supply. Um, it's putting out 12 volts. Um, so it should be able to power this light uh, just fine. So if we hook this up here and then we turn it on, we see that, hey, we have light. So the next thing to do is measure the current draw because we don't want, you know, we have I think we have 30 amps available for our lighting, um, and if these are drawing 165 milliamps, we should be well within the range for that. But what we'll do is, just to be sure that the that the spec was correct, we'll wire this in. So we'll hook this up, and then we will we have this hook to measure amps. So we're putting this meter in line with our connections, and then we should see the number light up here so right now oh my goodness that's lower than before how's that even possible oh that's the wrong one sorry there <laughs> all right so we see here on our connection that we are getting about 0.13 which is actually less than they said. So they said these were rated at 165 milliamps. It looks like we're getting about 130, about 130 milliamps. Okay, so 130 milliamps is what we're gonna go with. A little bit less than the 165 milliamp that they were rated for, but yeah, there's a tolerance on these things and they seem pretty bright. Um, we're trying to figure out how many of these we wanna put in and where we wanna put them and how we want to control them. So in other words, what kind of groupings we're going to get um, with these lights. So anyway, we've made up a little mock-up of the roof, sort of, just a, just something that has holes in it, basically, where we can wire these things up, and then um, we'll go ahead and um, wire them in and then show you sort of how the relay is working. So that's the next step. All right, so we have our mock-up here and we've wired it all in. So it was a pain and we just used wires that we had laying around from other projects. These are, some of these are from the BMS and from the 12 volt wiring that we did. Anyway, we just used whatever scraps we could. So try not to pay too much attention to the mess this is. This looks like a mess, but this will actually save us a significant amount of wiring work when it's finally done. So what we've done is we have our ESP32 right here. So this is our main processor and it communicates via this little ribbon cable here to just this breadboard. Then this breadboard just goes on and connects to this set of relays. So there are eight relays here. We only have eight, uh, seven lights um, because what I think we did is we ordered one and we were like, well, do we like these or not? And then we ordered six. So we only have seven. So we've cut holes for eight because um, we thought maybe we would use uh, six lights in the living room area and then two lights in the up front, kind of near the driver uh, area. And so we've wired in the relays. 
so they're all wired in. I've written some code um, that I'll make available if anybody wants, but it's very, very simple code to just to power these relays and listen for the MQTT message. So this is the hardware piece of it. Um, it's all being powered by a 12 volt power supply that's just kind of strung together. So this will be the 12 volts that comes from the house battery. So the 12 volts comes in here. It comes into each of the relays, um, and then um, each of the relays then goes to an individual light. So all the power uh, can be tied together. All the uh, negatives, or I'm sorry, all the positives are tied together, and then all the grounds are run to the relays. So um, all the positives are tied together with these little guys here. So there's a couple of those around here that are tying all the all the positives together and then the negative leg goes to each of these relays so then the negative leg um, then gets switched so anyway so that's that part of it so we'll flip this over so it's not so ugly and it'll demonstrate a little better and then we'll come back and we'll show you how it all works with the home assistant stuff that we've set up all right so we've set up home assistant in a very simple configuration so we've grouped these two lights, so these are kind of pretending like they're um, in the in the uh, in the front of the vehicle, and then these six lights, which we don't have the sixth one, but these then seven or these five are going to pretend like they're in the living room area. And so, if we look at the home assistant screen, we see that we have hooked these up so that the front lights are grouped together. And so the kind of cool thing about the group is you can send one, one switch can control all the lights in that grouping. And so um, that makes it nice so if I have a switch and I, you know, it's a simple switch that I just press on and off, it'll just go ahead and turn on all the lights on and off at one thing as if they're just on a single switch. So. Um, to demonstrate this, we will, and it's here on my phone, it's the same thing. So we can turn on the front passenger light, and so that brings this light on. And then we can see the state is reflected in that one as well. So same with if we turn both. Now both the front ones are on, and like I said before, we can control them with just the one toggle. So that's how it works and so now same with the living room lights if I toggle all of them on there they go and here they all are on now let's say I only want them on the on the left side there so what, what I would do is I would turn these ones off and now only this side is on so let's see passenger so I'll go ahead and so now we can see we only have half of them on here so and then we can individually turn them on or we only want them up front um, we can just do that. Now they're just up front. So it gives us a lot of options without needing to wire each one of these lights up to its own separate switch. We can then control them individually um, with you know this app or another piece of logic. These all listen to an MQTT message and so um, that gives us a great amount of flexibility. So once they're all wired up they all just work that way and so we can control it from the PC as well so if Michelle toggles that switch on from there we can see that they turn on same as if I had another piece of hardware and um, and it was controlling these lights and sending those messages um, these would all get updated so you can see it all gets updated um, as the, the lights are being switched so there it goes. So that's how it's gonna work. So that's a real simple demonstration. Um, so the next step on these is, we don't just want them to come on, um, what if we could get them to dim? So and we could dim them individually. So we're gonna play with that and see, well, is that worth the trouble or is that? So right now they're being operated by a simple relay, um, which doesn't, so the way you dim an LED light is you pulse the signal that you send to it, it's called a PWM, um, and relays cannot do that because they're a physical means of, of letting the current through. So what we're gonna have to do is switch 
from this way to another thing called a MOSFET, which is just like a, it's a transistor basically, and it will work as the on off switch for these. And because these draw such a little bit of current, so as we saw, they only draw 0.13 or 130 milliamps or something. Um, even just a very small MOSFET should be able to power these without any problem. Most MOSFETs, um, a good size MOSFET is rated at about 30 amps and we're pushing less than a tenth or about a tenth of an amp. So it should be absolutely fine to run without, uh, without heat sinks and without need for worrying that it's going to overheat or anything like that. So anyway, that's what we're going to tackle next on this particular set of projects. Um, we've got like a bunch of projects going on in parallel right now, but this is where we are on this one. I just kind of wanted to show, hey, here's the progress we're making and here's how it's going to work and um, validate some assumptions that I had about MQTT and its ability to work with us and for us and things like that. And I think we have done that um, uh, and we'll go ahead and continue working on a little bit further. So it's been fun and we just kind of wanted to show an update of what's going on.